We've talked so much about the unpleasantness of radio, and there seems to be so much of it behind the scenes. I have to ask you, let's talk about some of the pleasures. What are some of the pleasures people can experience in the profession of radio? I personally love when someone tells me, I heard that Sunday show that you, uh, that you produced this week, and it sounded great. When you get compliments from average Joes on the street, when people recognize you, you for the work you do, when um, sometimes I go in somewhere and I'll be talking to people and they'll say, "Oh, you're Howie Silberger. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. I heard your show. I heard I heard the show you produce on the on 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 the radio station. And you know, it's it's a, it's an amazing show. I listen to it every week. That's all I have to hear in order to feel good about what I do. Uh, basically, you're sitting in a small room, you're pushing buttons, and you're playing. Basically, you're playing music to yourself, or you're uh, or you're talking to yourself. You don't have an audience. There's no live audience in a radio station. Your audience are people who are sitting at home or sitting in their cars and turning on their radio. The only way you know that people are actually listening is when they tell you they're listening. And if nobody ever tells you you're listening, then you know it gets discouraging. But when people tell you you're listening, you feel like the greatest person in the world. Because you did a good job and people appreciate the job you did. Is that the only pleasure that you experience in radio? In corporate radio, definitely. What about in non-corporate radio? My private radio station, I wanted to have fun. My idea was, this is going to be a fun station, we're going to have a good time. I love when I talk to people and I say, I have an internet radio station, here's the website, go check it out, truetalkradio.com, click on it, it's there, and uh, you can hear you can hear all this great talk radio I've compiled. And then I get emails or, or, or someone calls me up and says, hey, I want to do a show on that station. Um, I find that a lot more fun than working for the corporate station. I find the corporate station job really a boring job. Because they're all, all they're worried about is the bottom line. I, I'm not worried about the bottom line. I'm worried about getting the most fun programming I can on the air. I, I'm worried about what the listener thinks because they don't have a vested interest in me and I don't have a vested interest in them. So I'm just thinking that if I'm entertaining myself, I'm entertaining them. And so all the shows I try to put on the radio station are shows that, that entertain me. If I'm laughing, I'm assuming other people are laughing too. I may be wrong, but this is the assumption I'm making. Is if I'm enjoying it, then other people are enjoying it too. I mean, I've gotten a couple of complaints about the uh, <laughs> about <laughs> some of the programming we have, but uh, in the general, in most part, uh, we we uh, yeah we get complimented. <laughs> You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles, and we'll be back right after this. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. What would your life be like if you knew exactly what to say and do with women? This book is for the guy that simply wants to learn how to handle women's tests by addressing her emotional needs. By this, you create the type of attraction that will make her see you as the one she was destined to be with. This book will teach you how to get the woman you want and how to keep her. Everything out of her mouth is a test is the Rosetta Stone for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks and how to respond. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Adult Male Virgin Seminar and Telephone Consultations. Guys, if the only breast you ever touched was in a bucket of chicken, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the only thing you've licked recently has been your fingers to turn the pages of a book, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the only female body part you are familiar with wears a cape, can fly, or has superpowers, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If you think the G-Spot is the name of a new club, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the words missionary conjures up images of guys in long robes, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the only sensation your fingers have had are pressing the buttons on your remote control, then you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. Do you know what it means when a woman asks you up to her place for coffee? If you think that she is thirsty for caffeine, then you definitely need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. Only available at franktalks.com. Frank helps adult boys become men. Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles Mission Statement. Our mandate is to make the world a better place by sharing information and interviewing people who actively experience and live various different pleasures and lifestyles. 
in order to inspire and educate listeners about the possibilities to lead more interesting and fulfilling lives. You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Frank because I have to be. We're in studio today with Mr. Howard Silbiger, who is the proprietor of TrueTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to studio, Howie. Thank you very much. All right, let's uh, pick up where we left off. You were talking about the reasons you had, the motivations you had to set up your own internet radio station. I'd like to go into what it is you look for in the DJs that you appoint to produce shows that air on your station. You have to be fun. That's basically it. You have to be able to do something fun that makes me laugh. I like laughing. Or, if not laugh, you have to do something that impresses me. This is what I'm looking for. Two things. Make me laugh or impress me. I had a guy who uh, who came to me and said he wants to do a jazz show. A show with jazz music and blues music. And I said, oh, okay, uh, you know, we're really not a music station, but, you know, go for it and let's hear it. And he put together the first episode of this show, and it blew me off my feet. He went out and he got a local record producer, a local record uh, distributor to donate the records to him for the show. And uh, he got um, he got interviews with like these blues legends that uh, through this guy he got interviews with some blues legends, and he sort of did like an interview show with music and uh, and a lot of background in it, and he sounded good and and the show was really a good show. I mean, he only did six episodes, and then he got uh, busy with life. You know, sometimes life gets in the way, and when you're not getting paid, uh, sometimes life really gets in the way, and you can't do all the free stuff you want to do, but. Um, the six episodes, I've aired them for almost two years now. Um, I just keep airing them over and over again because I happen to love them. And if I love them, then whoever's listening to them loves them. Because, you know, it's not it's not so much as a repeat. But if you like the music and you like the way the guy does it, even if you know to show off by heart, why do people watch reruns on, uh, on, on, on these stations that, that air 24-hour reruns? It makes them happy. It makes them happy, right? Exactly. So I have six episodes of a very high-quality, well-produced show. And I air it, and sometimes I get emails saying, hey, I heard that episode a couple of days ago. Well, of course you did. There's only six of them. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear it next week, you can hear the same episode, too. There's only six of them. Um, but, you know, Faulty Towers, the uh, the BBC show uh, starring John Cleese, only made nine episodes, and they've been airing for 30 years. If you have something good, why not use it? That brings up another topic. Do you really have a hard time finding content? Very. Very, very hard time. You know, a lot of people are looking for jobs in radio, but not a lot of people want to work for the job in radio. Uh, a lot of people think they're talented, but when it comes down to it, they, they're they very raw, and they need to be able to develop their talent. And the only way you could develop your talent is to work at a minor station like True Talk Radio or, or to go out to the Hicks and uh, and work in a Hicks station. Um, personally, I would prefer to work at a station at True Talk Radio, Produce a show on my own, uh, find a studio somewhere, plug a microphone into your computer and produce a show for True Talk Radio rather than going out to the Hicks, going out to the Sticks and doing something in the Sticks um, and be able to hone it while I'm at home, in the comfort of my own home, be able to hone my skills that way. Um, this is the opportunity I'm offering people. I have guys in Toronto who produce a show. Uh, the show is hilarious. It's, it's really a funny, funny show. They produce it once in one a week, at one a week. They've done 23 weeks already. And uh, he just loves doing the show. And he doesn't even care how many people are listening. In fact, he jokes on the show. Yeah, we only got three listeners this week. Uh, any of you three guys out there listening, please email me. Because I'm desperate for emails. And uh, nobody ever emails me. So send me an email. But today we're going to talk about this. And tomorrow we're going to talk about that. And, you know, and he produced a weekly show. Um, it's all a matter of attitude. And it's all a matter of, of commitment. If you're committed to getting into radio, hone your skills, get good at them. Then you could get into radio. If you're not good at your skill, forget about it. No one's going to pay attention to you. What other advice would you offer someone who came up to you today and said, Mr. Solberger, I'd really like to get into radio. Where do I start? Most radio stations will tell you you have to do an unpaid internship. And um, they'll take advantage of you for as long as you allow them to. 